Welcome to Bridge the Atlantic's B-Sides, a brand new show where we share material that doesn't quite fit in with our interview series, such as outtakes, bonus segments, and useful tips from your two favorite co-hosts, as well as the occasional surprise drop-in from some of our favorite previous guests. We're your hosts, music web designer Ross Barber-Smith from Scotland, owner of Electric Kiwi, where we create awesome custom websites for bands, artists, and musicians. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as Electric Kiwi. And I'm singer-songwriter and multi-instrumentalist Marcy Novelli from Canada, a man who wears many hats, literally and figuratively. When I'm not releasing music under my own name, I'm producing and mixing records for other artists, or directing and editing music videos and music documentaries. If you'd like me to produce your next record or direct your next music video, just get in touch with me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or Patreon. They're all my name, Marcy Novelli. And we are excited to share that we've made some significant updates to our Patreon page. And we invite you to become an official patron of the show. Yep, you. uh, To help things grow and go and be more awesome. (laughs) Yes, perks include early access to content, of course. And uh, sponsored ads, not only at the end, but also at the start of our show. um, As well as your chance to co-host an episode alongside us. I mean, come on. can help us bridge the Atlantic even further if you're from like... Australia or something. <laughs> something makes sense. Yeah. So that would be bridging the Pacific too, right? Kind of. Well, just bridging you know, the world. Exactly. <laughs> that wouldn't even be the Pacific. Kind of. Well, it depends on which angle you come from, right? <laughs> what side you're coming in from. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, we've also got our official BTA shirts available to purchase on our website. Uh, you've seen Marcio and I wear pretty much every color that we have available. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a link to get them in our show notes. And uh, if you use the coupon code BTA Rocks, you'll receive 10% off your purchase. Is our little way of saying thank you. Gracias. And um, you know, I mean, if you turn in, if you tuned into our first B sides episode, which was the last Tuesday of last month which was March 2017, yep, and this March, is the yeah. last Tuesday of this month, April 2017, um, you would know that I just recently released a brand new acoustic EP called The Reimagining Volume 1. Uh, you'd know that because that entire first B-Sides episode was pretty much dedicated to Ross interviewing me about that EP. <laughs> so, hey, I, I mean, it, if you missed it, you, you missed a lot of info about that. Uh, so it is now out. It's been out for a, a, a month now. And you can listen to it anywhere you like to download or stream music. And I encourage you to share it freely with the world. Spread it uh, around. Spread the love. (laughs) Exactly that, what he said. Yeah. (laughs) Well, you know, since uh, since our first B-Sides episode um, basically featured Ross interviewing me, um, which is not really what B-Sides is going to be about, really. B-Sides is always going to be something different. Uh, it's not going to be just like us interviewing each other or anything like that. You know, that would be silly. However, for the second <laughs> installment of B-Sides, we thought it would be fun for me to interview Roz. Um, you know, I, I think I think on this show, uh, I might get a bit more focused than you do uh, when it comes to me talking about what I do sometimes. Just because we often have musicians on a show and it mm-hmm. just naturally comes out that I'll relate to what they're doing but I don't think you often get as much of a spotlight to um, shine and talk about what you do uh, outside of Bridge Atlantic so I hope that we can enlighten people a little bit here on uh, let them get to know you a little bit more but also anyone that is a um, web designer out there and uh, an artist in any form maybe they can they can learn something from you which I think they can learn a lot from you. I learned a lot from you um, you've helped me with my Photoshop skills, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's where Skype sharing screen comes in very I know, handy. right? I know. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I want to jump right in and just uh, ask you three things about yourself that everyone should know. You didn't do this with me, but I'm oh, going to do this no. with you. <laughs> Seriously? You're going to do three things with me? <laughs> you just did this. Jeez, okay. Um, no. I want to make them interesting, though. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I want to make them not just the standard boring Okay. Well, Shit. you know what? Since you're making it, why don't we go back and forth? Because I didn't do one last week uh, or last okay. month. So we'll go back and forth. So that way you have a little bit of time to think in between. How's that work? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I you still so. got to go first though. Okay. Well, some people know this. Some people don't know this. Marcio knows this. Around this time of the year, I start bombarding him with Eurovision related <laughs> stuff. Now people outside of uh, Europe may not know what Eurovision is. If you don't, Tweet me and I will it's direct you to some awesome, like awesome videos. American Idol times a hundred million. 
Well, in, in every a lot way. of people call it like the Olympics of music. Oh, it yeah, also okay. gets called Gay Christmas. Um, <laughs> it gets referred to as a lot of things. So that's one thing uh, is that I am obsessed with Eurovision. I try and keep my obsession on the down low uh, outside of Eurovision season, but kind of uh, April, May, uh, it takes over. Um, it's a distraction, but it's one that I like very much. Well, you know, a lot of people might not know this about me, but I'm vegan. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, you never mentioned it. <laughs> But, you know, I'm, I'm also just so obsessed, uh, I guess, with eating healthy and being healthy. But I, I love to run. Um, I try to eat really healthy. And uh, my wife and kids, we are all a vegan family. A more interesting thing is that my wife and I actually make a lot of our own food. Like, I make my own cereal. And the other day I went to go get the supplies for it. And, the, you know, I was getting a bunch of nuts and seeds. <laughs> It's <laughs> so typical. And uh, the girl's like, oh, what are you making? I'm like, oh, cereal. She looked at, she just gave me this look. To me, it's just so normal, but she just gave me this look. Like, huh? That was, kind of the sound, cereal? that was kind of the sound her, her face <laughs> made was, huh? <laughs> well, because like, it's just, it's such a good cereal. It's my favorite thing to eat in the morning. Okay, I gave you a okay. lot of time to think of another one there. Yeah, number two. Well, I mean, I was so intent listening to your story that I uh, <laughs> I forgot to think about what um <laughs> what my next one would be. Okay, I'll, I'll say my first job uh -huh. was working in Pizza Hut. It was not fun. <laughs> uh, did not like it. Um, I ate a lot of pizza. At one point, all I ate was pizza. Mm -hmm. And ended up collapsing before going into work one day because what? I was so malnourished because all I ate was pizza because real? it was free. Yeah, I mean, it might oh not have been God. that I was malnourished. But it might have just been a mixture of lots <laughs> well, of things. But It sounds better if you say that. Um, something that you recently discovered about me that is I actually kind of have a hobby of uh, taking apart computers and stuff. I really I really enjoy mm -hmm. the hardware, hardware side of uh, computers. So I actually built my own PC. But, uh, but yes, that's something that people might not know about me. Okay, number three the is first, the first album I ever got, and really, I mean, how how my parents didn't know I was gay, Michael Bolton. At this point, uh, first album I got was the Spice Girls debut album, but <laughs> and and I have a story. I didn't buy it. I won it from Nickelodeon <laughs> on a on a call, like a phone in no. competition, a signed copy of their album, the first wow. Spice Girls album. Are you serious? Yep, and then my dad sold it at a car boot <gasps> sale because it was in the, the garage at our house. <gasps> he didn't realize it was signed and it probably would be worth some money now. It's probably sold worth it for like, thousands of dollars. Sold it for like probably a pound. And then, and then, <laughs> <laughs> Did you cry? So, no, no, I, I, I didn't cry. Um, I would have been like that. I was a little, a little, a little oh, good, but... Um, no. Well, I'm going yeah. to steal your third one and just say yeah. that um, I actually own the Spice Girls. CD too. Um, you shouldn't be ashamed. I no, mean, we were no, how old? 10? No, no, no. Not even 10, I was, actually. No, I was grade 7. So I was like 12. 12 or 13. Oh, yeah. You're older than me. I forgot. Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Only by a year. Okay. So here's the thing, though. I, it, it, was, it was to impress the girls. When I heard Wannabe for the first time, I was like, I don't want to like this, but I did like this. And I, I totally got into it because all the girls were into it. And right. uh, yeah, I even went to go see the movie with a bunch of girls. See, friends. I think for me, that was just the first time that I'd heard music that wasn't what my parents listened to. Uh, it was the right, first right. thing that I sort of decided myself that I liked. Mm -hmm. So, you know what? Enough about the Spice Girls. Yeah. Let's talk about you a little bit, man. Um, okay. Well, you know, I, I guess you can, you can totally be the one to answer this, but I'm going to just straight up ask you, why the hell does a band need a website? Okay. A few reasons. And I, I get asked this a lot by bands themselves. One angle is really that it looks more professional to have your own website rather than sending everyone to Facebook or Twitter or wherever. Um, it shows a level of de dedication and commitment that you're willing to invest in your career. Um, I also think with social media, you never know what's going to happen with it. I mean, look at MySpace. I know you had experience with MySpace. You built up a huge fan base on there and then MySpace decided, well, Facebook came along. Everyone decided ditching MySpace, going to Facebook. And yeah. people, the artists were just left with, oh, right, I've got no way of reaching these I people. I think I right? was able to translate maybe 10% of those people. And still to this day, through some mailing list, maybe another 10%, you know, emails. But yeah, it was... Exactly. And obviously you're not, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. Happened to so many people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as, as unlikely as it is that that would happen, I think people are too invested in Facebook now for that to happen on the same extent. But... You know, we all experience Facebook pages. You're not getting the same reach as you were before. All this kind of stuff. So I think it is on the decline. 
And I think that really you need something that you own, that you have control of, that you can send people to. And one of the big things that you can do on your website is get people's email addresses. And we've talked about this in interviews with Benji Rogers, Rick Barker. So many people emphasize the importance of having that mailing list. And it's for that pretty much that same reason is, you know, the reach that you're getting on social media is declining. But email has stayed pretty constant throughout, you know, the whole time. So you do need a way that you can reach fans if you've got a tour coming up or just to build that relationship with them or if you've got a new release coming out. And also with a website, you've got much more flexibility on how you can present yourself than you can on Facebook and Twitter because you're limited to that very specific template. You've got your header image, you've got your profile image, but the design is out of your control. So your own website can be, you know, it can really reflect what you do musically and it can be changed, you know, as time goes on the way that you want it to rather than being dictated by Facebook or Twitter. How it can look. Well, that's the thing, it, you know, even, even if you and I, when we get approached by artists to be on the show or, or anyone from the industry, you know, when we're sent right to a Facebook page or something like that. I mean, we've seen Facebook pages for so long. They, nothing grabs your attention. All you've got is a banner to maybe grab your attention, a little profile image. And I mean, all you're going to see is the most recent or pinned post. You I mean, all these other more important things can be lost in the shuffle. So at least a website, you go to it, you immediately see the artist nice and big, usually, you know, or a logo or something and the most pertinent information. You know, there, there will be a time that people maybe aren't at the point where they are ready for a site. Um, like if they don't have much, con- like if they've just started, for example, mm-hmm. and they've got no music, they've got no music recorded, they've got no video, they've got nothing. I think at that point, it's still worth registering your domain name so that you yeah. can secure it and no one else can get it. And yeah. even just put up a very simple coming soon page with links to your socials. Because a lot of artists come to me and, and they don't have very much ready at the moment and they're, they're on a limited budget. And I say, yeah. well, why don't we start off with a one page site? And what we do is we expand on it as you grow. And that way you're not committing to this, this big project mm-hmm. that you don't have content for. Because who wants to go? to a site and every page is coming soon coming soon coming soon if you only need one page right now then only get one page right now you know and it, it, it kind of all ties in together i think you need the website but you need the social too um not only to promote your music but actually to or whatever you're doing but actually just to be a human and connect with people that you would wouldn't be able to connect with otherwise like you and i <laughs> yeah I, I can't remember exactly how or when pam and i connected but mm-hmm. i think it was probably on twitter first and then then you know it became facebook and after kind of getting to know her on a more person in a more personal way than you can through messaging really really liked her and thought you know she would be pretty perfect for bridge atlantic let's just be honest let's just be honest she has a phenomenal laugh you messaged me and said this woman has a phenomenal laugh we need to have her on the show and she gave she we had such a great interview with her um if you haven't if you haven't uh, tuned into that interview yet make sure you go check it out and uh, she, there were so many. We had so many outtakes with her, but it wasn't yeah. like sometimes it's embarrassing when we out, when we screw up a lot. But with her, every time she just laughed hysterically. Um, so, anyways, uh, let's take a look at uh, one example of these wonderful outtakes. Yes, as a sync licensing specialist, Pam as sync licensing. Sp- Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that word, that word needs to be changed. <laughs> what, is, what is happening today? <laughs> Ross messed up the notes. You know what this is like? You know what this is like? This is like when news this is anchors... Like waves world. This is, like, this is like... This is like when news anchors piss off the teleprompter person and then they type something in. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what Ross is doing. You're trying to, you're trying to fuck with me, aren't you, Ross? Totally I'm trying, trying and succeeding, yeah. Um, I love it. it. This is great. I take... <laughs> That is an outtake, dude. That yeah, actually needs totally. to be posted as an outtake. Just saying. Okay, oh, just God. Saying. You're killing All right. Me. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that you're purposely sabotaging me. I'm just saying. Well, maybe. You could be onto something there. <laughs> I don't know. For Just to give everyone a bit of background, I, I write up the notes. Yes. Uh, you know, for, for the, the, the scripts. Um, quote, unquote. And they're not really scripts. <laughs> Just sometimes Marcio will and sometimes Marcio won't read them in advance. Sometimes I don't um, ever. So sometimes I, I, you know, I may accidentally um, <laughs> make some mistakes uh, to see if he's paying attention. Uh, no, I'm not. Clearly there, he wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyways, uh, I, w- I want to ask you, um, we already know why an artist should have a website and uh, why they should hire you to do it. But uh, what should uh, their website actually include? Um, I think it kind of, it varies a little bit from artist to artist. 
But I think um, it, it's important to know what you want to achieve from your website and what you want people to do when they're there. So, for example, if you've got a new single out, that should be the main focus of the website. You want people to be able to hear it and also be able to buy it or receive it in exchange for their email address, for example. So it's kind of a case of thinking about, you know, what what you want to promote and what you want people to do, first of all. But generally speaking, the things I would always suggest to people to have on their website are a mailing list sign up because you do need to get their email address again, preferably in exchange for something that they're not going to get elsewhere. Um, and a way for people to get in touch with you. I see too many artists websites that don't have a contact page and oh. coming from the podcaster perspective, oh, God. Um, we want to interview get in you touch and promote you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we tell the world about you. If there's no email address for, for you or for your publicist or for your manager or whoever it is that handles anything for you, mm -hmm. um, you know, you could be missing out on so many opportunities as a result. Um, annoyingly, there's so many artists I want to contact to tell them that they need to add that to their site, but I've got no way of getting in contact with them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to go, oh, ironic, right? You want to get in contact with them on yeah. the website. Have me fix your website so that you have contact information. It's a catch-22, people. It's so <laughs> annoying. Um, <laughs> other than that, I think a design that reflects your music and instantly gives people a feel for who you are mm -hmm. as an artist is really important. I think often that can be dictated by the photography um, but then also, you know, colors and fonts and all these say, kind of things are I was going to say, you have important. a real skill for that. Like, obviously, part of it is photography, and I know that you you definitely drive with the photography, but you're often given several different photos that could really all give a different vibe. I mean, uh, and, and you really do have a, a knack for um, finding that vibe every single time. You've sent me to several artists, and uh, without you even telling me that you've done their website, I immediately say, oh, you did their website, didn't you? One, because it's mm -hmm. awesome. Two, you do have a bit of a style which is actually, with a it's, it's interesting, you have a style while giving each website and each artist their own style. You make things very neat, very clean. And I actually remember when we first worked on my website, I wanted to do a, have a bunch of different things going. And you're like, you know what, let's do drop down menus, let's keep it clean. Mm -hmm. uh, or maybe I said, I don't know, we both said, we were both very, we we're both very neat and clean organized. So yeah, I think we, we, cool both, we both agreed that keeping it, like, because you have a lot of content. Yeah. You so, had a lot of stuff there. Yeah. It was really a case of determining um, how we could have all of that, but not make it overwhelming mm -hmm. when someone first gets there. And I think that is often the challenge. I think that when artists do the sites themselves, that's often where things fall down is that there's, they've got so much stuff and they don't really know how to organize it or where it should live. So they kind of just put everything all in one yeah. place. And that can be really, really difficult. Um, but yeah, I definitely think that photography especially for independent artists, I think is really important because if people don't know you when they go to your website, you want them to, you want, I guess you want them to know who you are before they leave. But also I think getting to know the vibe of you when they first get there will hopefully lead them to want to listen to the music that's there, which is then hopefully going to lead them to the, to them signing up to your mailing list or buying your merch or going to a show or, or whatever it is that you want them to do. Or even just coming like, back. Yeah. Like you, you want know? to, you want to make sure that they know who you are as soon as you get there. Your music can be the greatest thing in the world if you don't attract people to listen to that music, and you know it's you're, they'll never hear it. Yeah, it's all about making you a know? good first impression. Like that's yeah. that's that's really what it comes down to. And you know whether that's making a good first impression to a fan or to someone in the music industry, either way, it's important. Anyway, this is all awesome information. Um, now, obviously, we do the show in addition to our own respective careers, and I think we can both agree that connecting with other creative people is definitely the perk of doing the show sometimes in doing the show there are some small children <laughs> and animals uh who want to get in on the action i, I guess yeah. we could say one of them <laughs> being uh I, I guess he's kind of our unofficial mascot i think he's famous the show. i think people <laughs> recognize loki more than us <laughs> people care more about loki than they care about I'm me i'm pretty like sure that when we post photos of us wearing our shirts you know people are like yeah cool the second you post like a photo of loki wearing a shirt it's like oh it's strange. a dog wearing a shirt i'm gonna buy it <laughs> so basically we I need know. to post like photos of loki wearing a shirt it's like every day <laughs> I, th That's I think we do. I think we do. We might need to get a special one designed for him though, because he's got such a long spine. I know, so I think right? He might need like a a long one, but maybe the Bridge Atlantic logo goes on his back or something. Well, I, I want everyone to that. see that this is what happens when pets get involved in our show. Um, I wrote a line many many years ago. Um, Perfection is a flaw. Okay. 
not right. you know and and it happened to be something that many people have gotten their tattooed on their skin because it, it connected with them in one level or another um for me perfectionism is something that i definitely struggle with on all levels what do we think um leads to us feeling confident as artists is it really outside validation is it really inside confidence enough no, confidence both, but... yeah at least enough confidence that you can keep going i'm not saying cockiness or anything just enough confidence right, right. and i think what for me what it's come out to be is i think when you do something long enough you start getting you start knowing that you're capable of a particular um level i guess of like quality. standard a standard yeah yeah so i think at least for me writer's block or any of those things kind of come in when i feel like I'm not reaching that standard I've set for myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think someone's moving your back curtain there, Ross. Oh, Loki. It just completely Loki. moved. <laughs> oh, I'm so I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, where are you? <laughs> sorry, it's my, it's my, my dog. Oh, oh, it's okay. okay. You want to come up? It's because yeah. it's your dinner time. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> so sorry. Oh, no, so Loki cute. always wants to invade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> You want to look at my pet? I have my pet rabbit, yeah, okay. Beatrice. Yeah. She's right over here. Yeah, get it, get he it, might try and jump it. into the screen by looking. I'm sure. You want to make, All right, I'll, I can get Beatrice. Point? One second. Okay. <laughs> That's what, this is turning into a whole different segment. <laughs> oh, well, we were going to talk about perfectionism and, um, <laughs> and uh, what leads to actually feeling confident with yourself as an artist. But no, we're going to turn this no. into an animal segment. <laughs> Which is actually much more interesting anyways, let's just face it. <laughs> it's not more this interesting, is... it's cuter. Yeah, that's true, it's like, actually much more interesting. That is a chubby <laughs> little rabbit. I'm just going to straight yeah. up and say it. He is She's... a chubby and adorable oh. little rabbit. So this is Beatrice. Oh. She's a lump. <laughs> oh. Yeah, she's my buddy. Oh. Hey, I woke her up. She's nocturnal, so... Um... You say hi, hi. Beatrice. Oh. Hello. Oh, no. Look at Loki, too. Loki's all just like... I'll chill. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I Should know. I go get my oh. kids or? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> like they're so cute. Look pets. at them. <laughs> it's my little dude. My little dude, Loki. Before we wrap up here, uh, I want to quickly mm -hmm. just let us know um, what should an artist be looking for in a designer like how should they choose a designer there's so many wonderful people out there and if for some crazy reason they're not picking ross barber smith of electric kiwi to do their website um, especially if you're a musician you should definitely be be looking at ross because that's what he does that's what he specializes in but anyway besides that what should they be looking for um i mean i think it's important to work with someone that you like uh so i would definitely say you know before you commit to a particular designer, try and have a conversation with them, see what their process is, see how much input you can have. Cause some designers, you know, will want, you know, they, they'll be pretty focused on what they already have in mind for you. Uh, personally, I like it to be a pretty collaborative process. I like, you know, I, I want, I want the artist to be happy with what we do. So I like them to be involved every step of the way. Um, check out their previous work see what kind of style they've got everyone has their own kind of style uh something that's you know right for one person may not be right for another um so i would definitely say do that check their uh past you know if they've got testimonials or recommendations um and see if you know anyone that's worked with them as well and see what their feedback was because i think that can be really important um in, in choosing a designer and i think also as well is um budget that that dirty word um you know, be realistic with, you know, how much someone's work is worth. Um, and know, you know yourself how much you have available and factor that in when you're doing your research, when you're speaking to people about who you want to work with. Absolutely. And uh, I would I would just add in there, have a Skype call with them. I, as you know, that's I think that's why you and I work together. I often like to um, have a Skype call with anyone that I'm going to bring into my team whatsoever, have any sort of part in my career, because you can learn a lot from someone in like under five minutes just by having a mm -hmm. Skype call with them. And emails don't always come across properly at all. So, you know, just having a, a face, I, I like to say, especially in this digital world, you know, having the opportunity to have a face to face, even if it's within the digital realm, um, I think is very, very helpful. I would strongly recommend that. Yeah, definitely. And I think that works both ways. So mm -hmm. it, it can help the artist to decide whether they want to work with a designer and it can also help the designer decide mm -hmm. whether they want to work with the artist because, you know, just because you're paying doesn't mean we want to work with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> 
because it's, it, it's got the you know it's got to be a good fit both yeah. both ways and it's not gonna you know it's not gonna um be beneficial to Whoa. either <laughs> oh wow isn't this fitting come here skyler come mm-hmm. here come here come here come here isn't this fitting about young children <laughs> i know and animals interrupting the show can you say hi say hi can you say hi, hi uncle ross <laughs> oh he's acting shy now. you scared me you scared me okay daddy will be done in a few minutes okay okay bye honey <laughs> here wherever you come say hi too <laughs> And then a little other one that I'd interrupt. Skyler used to interrupt years ago before yeah. he went to school. And now River like, interrupts so sometimes. We something? Oh, we're recording an episode <laughs> right now. <laughs> and everyone's on here now. I know. Say hi, Chelsea. Sky. Okay, guys. He snuck down here when I went to go get River. Okay. <laughs> That's staying in. I hope they know that. <laughs> Hope they know that. <laughs> well, isn't that fitting? That is just you can't you can't plan stuff like that. You can write that. <laughs> you no. cannot plan stuff like that. Um, anyways, uh, we thought we'd wrap this uh, episode of B sides up with a fun little excerpt um, from our recent interview with musician, actor, and unicorn enthusiast Nathan West, aka East of Eli. That is that is a uh, that's all about you, the unicorn there. That's not my thing. Yeah, that's your. That's thing. right. Um, basically, we were talking about unicorns yeah. uh, because I think with Nathan you can't not talk about unicorns, um, and I brought up the subject of the UK passport, which has mm-hmm. a unicorn on the front because it is Scotland's national animal. Um, so I had to prove it to him, and uh, yeah, that's what you're going to see here is me proving to Nathan that yes, in fact, my passport does have a unicorn on it. And anytime I see a unicorn, I'm going to think of you. <laughs> you yes, and I'm, I'm so serious. I'm going to figure out how to get that passport. I'm just like, not yours. I'll get my own. Yeah, not mine. Yeah, yeah but I'm totally going to do it. I have to. I like, I, if that's even just like, if that's like a myth, I'm totally going to live that up and push that out there. Because I think you kind of might have to prove it on one of these episodes. You're totally yeah, going to have to prove that it has you, a unicorn on it. Do you know what? My it. passport is actually like not far from here. So I can't okay, get, get your passport. If you, just if get you your really passport. want me to prove just it, then I can get it. Get but just cover, gotta, cover all the info on it, right? Just make sure. But just, I got to see this. We got it. Just two seconds. Just do it. Just, we got to do it, man. Oh my God. There's a unicorn. There's a unicorn on the passport. Oh my God. Okay. That's right. That's it. I'm going to tell the wife Okay, I guess Scotland wins this episode. And I'm pretty sure the unicorn is actually the national <laughs> animal of Scotland, which oh I think is God. strange because no one knows if they actually exist. I mean, your national an- animal is the beaver. We all know the beaver, uh, the animal. Yes. <laughs> and wow. yeah, yeah, ours is a, a mythical beast. So it is. It's a magical place for sure. Apparently. I'm totally going to check it out. I'm, uh, we're moving. I'm, I can't wait till my wife comes home so I can let her know. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Bridge the Atlantic's B-Sides. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, iTunes, and YouTube. And don't forget to visit our website and pick up one of our shirts while you're there. Yes, um, as I'm sure that you all know, but I'm going to tell you again, I recently released a brand new solo acoustic EP, The Reimagining Volume 1, and it's available everywhere. Oprah moment. I'm also working on my second solo album. You can be a part of it at marcinavelli.com slash pledge. We've got really cool uh, special packages together there. Uh, make sure to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, and or Patreon. They're all my name. Very easy. M-A-R-C-I-O-N-O-V-E-L-L-I. I feel like I'm in elementary school spelling my name. Marcia Novelli. <laughs> I had to tell you something more like a cheerleader. And I was <laughs> to, like, do the... <laughs> that was always my dream. That was my dream. Oh, well, I'm sorry you never got to achieve those oh, heights. Well, we'll work on it. <laughs> uh, as for me, uh, I'm working on websites for various artists at the moment. Mm-hmm. If, uh, if you're interested in working with me uh, or just having a chat about, you know, what you want to do with your website, uh, you can uh, contact me via my site, which is electrickiwi.co.uk. You'll find me on Twitter and Instagram as Electric Kiwi and on Facebook Electric Kiwi Design. Yes, this episode was brought to you by the lovely Christine Infinger from 30 Roses, a virtual assistant and consultant to musicians and other creatives, as well as Chris Keaton, Joe Centenary, Buck Naked Soap Company, Music Entrepreneur HQ, and Social Surge. All wonderful people, wonderful companies, and uh, the links to each of them are in the show notes, so check them out because um, they're the reason that we do this show, or I should say they're the reason why we can do this show. They are indeed, and if you would like to join that list uh, of awesome sponsors, please visit patreon.com slash 
Bridge the Atlantic. Uh, we've recently updated the rewards, which now include a sponsorship at the start of the interviews, as well as an opportunity for you to co-host an episode. Uh, and we do have a Patreon patron only live stream uh, which we'll be doing monthly and um, all the details are on our patreon page and um, so yeah jump on there and uh, make sure to subscribe to us on youtube and itunes as well and leave us a comment and let us know what you think of the show all right so that's it for b-sides we'll be back next week with a brand new interview and next month with a brand new episode of b-sides